Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's podcast. My name is Catherine McDougall. I'm an orthopedic surgeon in Brisbane and, and a member of the Hip Fracture Steering Committee. And I'd like to welcome today Dr. Lorenzo Calabro, who's also an orthopedic surgeon in Brisbane at uh, Green Slopes, Prince Charles, and QE2. And the two of us today are going to discuss the surgical management of intertrochanteric fractures. Thanks for joining us, Lorenzo. Thanks for having me. So I just want to start with this graph. This is a graph from our most recent report, and it's looking at the fixation methods in intertrochanteric fractures. I think there's a couple of really interesting things. Um, the first, that there's been a definite trend towards the intramedullary nail um, compared to the sliding hip screw over a number of years. You know, when we first started in 2016, almost 50% of fractures were fixed using a sliding hip screw. And now that's down to about 25%. So that's not a small difference. You know, for me, Lorenzo, that's quite striking because my default has always been a sliding hip screw. Whilst there's definitely times that uh, I don't do that, it would certainly be my majority. And I don't like being on the, on the wrong side of a ledger. Uh, you know, my understanding of the evidence is that really there's not a lot of difference for overall complication rates between the two, but potentially there might be some biomechanical advantages in an intramedullary nail in some. Um, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I tend to agree, Kath. I'm a, I'm a little bit surprised by that as well. Um, I think that um, you're right in that the indications to use one over the other tend to be relative. They're not strongly supported by evidence one way or another. Um, I think some surgeons decide that they perhaps have a preference for one over the other and use it all the time. My feeling quite strongly is that um, there's, there are indications for both types of fixation. Um, that they that uh, that um, uh, and things that come into that are the stability of the fracture and uh, and the type of fracture involved. So um, uh, you know, I really think that there's a role for both types of fixation and that each have their optimal patient and fracture. Great. I know you've prepared a few examples of uh, you know the technical choices that you make. If you want to go through those with us, that'd be terrific. Sure, yeah, I just put a few slides together to, to illustrate for me what my indications are to use either the sliding hip screw or a, a nail. I'm going to share my screen. Um, one moment, I'll just get that going. So for, for me, uh, if we can see that slide there, um, okay. I, think, I think our goal is always to have a well-reduced, well-fixed fracture that's going to uh, give the patient good function early on. And I think that, that a stable, well-reduced fracture is more likely to do that. The patient's less likely to have pain and weight bearing. Um, I think that the sliding hip screw does a better job of this in some fractures. And, and those fractures tend to be the one, ones which are two-part fractures or, or more stable fractures and fractures where the top part of the fracture comes out through the tip of the trochanter or the piriform fossa. So I really do look at where that lateral or superior part of the fracture comes out. And then I'm also looking at stability there. Um, and stability is, a, is, um, is something which is a bit of a, a gut feel based on x-rays and that's around displacement, the size of a lesser trochanter fragment and comminution. So just to give a few examples there, this to me is a fracture which is going to do better with a sliding hip screw, the fracture on the right hip there. Um, there's probably, a, 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 there's, it's predominantly a two-part fracture. The fracture comes right out through the tip of the trochanter. Um, this one, you can reduce well on a traction table. The sliding hip screw doesn't interfere with the uh, uh, fracture where it comes out through the trochanter and you're able to achieve a good reduction and, uh, and, um, and hold it. Um, this is a similar fracture and this illustrates why I think the sliding hip screw does better than a nail. We know that when you're doing a nail, the entry point is critical um, and the problem here is that the entry point is right at the fracture and it's very difficult to avoid passing the nail into the fracture. And we not infrequently see this picture um, when a nail is used to fix a simple intertrochanteric fracture. Um, so the nail itself is a stronger construct, but if the fracture isn't nicely reduced, then the overall 
stability of that construct is going to be less. And I think that this patient's more likely to struggle in their post-operative period and probably has a higher risk of uh, going on to um, have complications. Um, I'll just show, uh, that, that patient actually did heal, so it shows that sometimes we get away with it. Um, I mentioned the lateral wall. This is a scenario where I would preference a nail. Um, so this fracture uh, looks like a simple endotrope, but there is a lower lateral wall fracture there. And we know from some of the work done in the UK that um, the, these fractures will, if you use a sliding hip screw uh, and you don't have a lateral buttress there, um, that the uh, uh, fragments can displace post fixation and lead to poorer outcomes. So I preference a nail for this kind of fracture with a low lateral wall. And then just one more I use a nail for, and this is trying to get to that question of stability. So this is a fracture with a large displaced lesser trochanter, um, quite a displaced uh, uh, intertrochanteric fracture. And I think there is a relative indication to use cephalomedullary nails for this kind of fracture, but, but that, that is perhaps controversial. Um, so that's, I guess, a quick rundown of how I tend to decide one or the other. Um, and um, I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts are on that, Kat. No, thank you, Lorenzo. Yeah, really great tip. So um, key considerations in summary is the stability of the, of the fracture, the fracture pattern um, primarily, but certainly it's important for us always to have an awareness of both, of both options. So there's some really good tips. Um, this is the next thing. So currently, uh, this is just one company's example, but a sliding hip screw costs about uh, $650 approximately. The, the short I am nail, $1,700. This is in the public system. So more than two and a half times the difference in cost when we're trying to provide high quality care in a sustainable system. Um, obviously being aware of all your technical considerations, if there's the option for really one or the other, how much better functionally does one have to be, do you think, for us to be able to justify um, you know, a difference in cost? What's your impression of that? I think we absolutely have to be um, cognizant of the, the, the cost of the implant. Um, and and I, I think you're right. I think if there's a good clinical or technical reason to, uh, to use the more expensive implant, then that's absolutely fine because those costs relative to extra days stayed in hospital are, are, are low. But um, in, in a situation where um, you know, there's absolutely no benefit, then, um, you know, uh, I think that that's a relative indication to use the sliding hip screw as well. Thanks, Lorenzo. So some great tips in summary. We have two great options for the surgical management of intertrochanteric fractures. Um, certainly, the culture seems to be shifting a bit overall in, in Australia, at least, uh, towards IM nails. And we should be thinking broadly about the overall um, risks of complication. Ultimately, let's get that um, patient managed with a single operation, you know, reduce the fracture, maintain that reduction and get the patient back on their feet again. All right, Lorenzo, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me, Kat. We'll see you all soon. Bye.